Thanks for joining us for 8 News at 6. I'm Deanna Albritton. I'm Eric Phillips. Tonight, 8 News is taking action at getting results for the residents of a Petersburg assisted living facility over claims of bed bugs, rotting, rotting food, and dirty bed sheets. I started digging when we received calls and messages that people were living there in unsanitary conditions. And now the state confirms it's investigating the facility that's already under the microscope. We want to warn you, the images you're about to see may disturb you. It shouldn't be this way, and it's, it's basically disrespectful. Kevin Harris flips through prints of the pictures he snapped. Just unclean, unsafe. Forcing him down a lane not of good memories, but of nightmares. It's always urine in the closet. Harris says he knew just a couple days into his job at Fillmore Place in Petersburg that he couldn't stay there long as a housekeeper. He started taking photos. He tells us he felt when he left. The images would help make sure someone knew about the conditions elderly and disabled residents were living in. If their families came here, I'm pretty sure uh, all these residents would have, would have been removed already because of uh, how, how nasty it is. In many rooms, Harris says he saw bedding soiled and ripped, including the bed bug covers Fillmore staff were apparently using to keep these bugs from spreading onto residents and other furniture. That's unacceptable. Like, I, I wouldn't... I wouldn't want my dog sleeping on nothing like that. He and his girlfriend, who also briefly worked at Fillmore, sent these pictures and other claims of horrifying conditions to several state agencies. But state records indicate the photos weren't showing the state anything new. The latest Department of Social Services inspection report lists and shows 26 different types of violations at Fillmore Place. Multiple examples of disrepair. Sheets and pillows on beds were dirty and bathrooms did not contain soap or toilet tissue. That was December 14th. By late February, when Harris was working there, he says nothing had changed. I questioned it and they were like, um, are we issuing them out of toilet paper and they have body washes in, in their rooms. And he says in their rooms, these pictures show the amount he had to clean up in just one of them when he started the job, indicating how long this problem must have festered. Harris recalled one time finding a resident's clothes that appeared soiled with months old fecal matter. Maggots, that's how long it was in there, how long it was in that closet. And nobody noticed? No one noticed. I reached out to Brenda Seal, Fillmore's administrator who manages day-to-day -day operations. The first time she hung up on me before we were able to speak significantly. We have four housekeepers. The second time we dug into some of Harris's claims. It's important to note Seal had rave reviews for Harris's work during his time there. He was doing a great job as cleaning. And admitted most of their other housekeepers had to be encouraged to do their jobs properly. Still, she maintains that. We're doing the best we can. And the claims about lack of bathroom hygiene products she says are untrue. No. We've always had toilet paper, paper towels, and soap in all the bathrooms. You say always, but the state there are state inspection reports that indicate otherwise, and there are pictures that show no toilet paper, even rod holders. Well, some people's bathrooms, because of their particular psychosis, we can't. When I continued to press Seal about why the state didn't sign off on this reasoning, she said it's possible with resident turnover, they forgot to put hygiene products back in certain bathrooms. As for the bed bugs, Seal told me the facility is being treated weekly now, but declined to provide proof that is the case or that they're treating often enough to handle what state records described as an infestation, with licensing staff like Harris observing bed bugs crawling on the wall near the bed by the door. So who's ultimately responsible? According to DSS, the person controlling the purse strings to fix issues, license holder Shella K. Niazi. SEAL confirms she and her husband, Dr. Saifullah Niazi, run Fillmore Place. I knocked at their house and the office for their company that owns Fillmore Place, Rightway Inc. It's the same suite Dr. Niazi used for his psychiatric practice until the state licensing board suspended his medical license for malpractice for the second time eight years ago. The lights are on. I left my contact information and a request for an interview at both places. They went unanswered. Without evidence from Fillmore's owner or administrator, it's unknown whether they have improved conditions there. But residents I spoke with near Fillmore the day I interviewed Harris in early April described conditions as disgusting, unsafe, 
and say staff is combative with them. We should, though, know something official soon. Fillmore Place has been operating under a provisional license since it failed to substantially comply with laws and regulations last year during license renewal. That gave staff up to six months until June 11th to clean up their act. DSS rules state if a facility isn't in compliance by the time its provisional license expires, it can't continue operating. I want to say they need to go ahead and just knock this building down, just build up another building and, and, and start fresh. Because of an active investigation at this facility, the Department of Social Services tells me there's limited information they're able to provide specific to Fillmore Place right now. For context of how rare it is for the state to refuse a facility a regular license, only 11 of the state's 570 assisted living facilities, less than 2%, are operating with provisional licenses right now. Well, now, if these upgrades are needed, and it's all but certain that they are, any indication as to why this has not happened? I mean, is this a matter of money that they don't have? Yeah, I mean, these are needed because the state has said that they are needed. So at least some of the residents do pay with something called auxiliary grants, and those are less than the cost of private care. But at one point, the facility did seem to be keeping up with maintenance despite that. And this facility, or at least the company owning the facility, got about $178,000 in PPP loan money during the pandemic. That's according to federal records. So, you know, some may be wondering why that didn't relieve pressure enough to keep up with all of this. Yeah, wondering that for good cause. Dan, a great investigation. Thank you very much.